There is literally nothing more frustrating than putting all the work and effort into your fruit trees, backyard fruit orchard, and you come out one day and they've been eaten, stung, who knows what. And this video is how you can save something like your peach harvest from the likes of the fruit fly and false coddling moth that can literally overnight completely decimate your year's harvest. So to start us off, let's have a look at what some of the most common pests are when we are looking at things like a peach, and nectarine, even things like almonds that are all in the stone fruit family. Things like apples, pears, they have different pests, but also some of them the same. We look at a few different options. So one of the most destructive pests, and excuse the flying vivazella, the hardy dough, one of the most destructive pests, in my opinion, is the weevil. Now, a weevil is a small little grey insect that goes up the trunk. They're actually born in the soil. They actually go down into the soil overnight. But in the evening, they're nocturnal. They will come up and they will eat the fruiting buds as they start to emerge. So you won't get flowers come out. They also start eating the fresh new growth as it starts to come out, which means you're immediately stunting that fresh new growth. I did a video on how to prevent weevils from being able to attack your trees and they, they don't really care what fruit tree it is, they will just indiscriminately decimate. So weevils are a big one, but if you have a weevil problem, you're not even going to reach the point of having golf ball size peaches, apples, pears on your tree you're just going to get nothing. So if you don't have weevils or you got your weevils under control, we start moving into flying insects. Flying insects are such a pain because it's not like something with weevils where you can just put a collar or put diatomaceous earth around the soil. These ones come in from anywhere and there are three flying pests in my experience that really hit peaches and other fruit really hard. The first one, which I'm sure a lot of you know about, is that big black and yellow beetle, the fruit chafer beetle. That one can cause so much destruction so quickly, and they fly in from quite long distances, so you're just controlling them in general is quite hard. They will just eat your fruit, eat them at the base of the fruit, they'll fall off, they'll eat the actual fruit themselves. So trying to keep those away or at least off your fruit is a very very challenging task for a lot of us fruit growers or people that grow fruit in our backyards. The other one is the fruit fly. Now a fruit fly it comes along it's a small little insect and it stings the fruit it's only the females that sting and they with that sting lay eggs inside the fruit those eggs ultimately turn into maggots they start eating the fruit from the inside out. The fruit will then fall to the ground with all the maggots. Those maggots will then crawl out into the soil over winter and you've got your next generation of fruit flies. They will also come and sting every fruit. You will have nothing because of this fruit fly. It's incredibly destructive, but there are multiple types of solutions to that. Things like pheromone traps, hydrolysized protein traps, lots of different types of traps, but this method probably the easiest if you have the, the available time and space. The next flying insect is a false coddling moth and if you have stone fruit the false coddling moth can wreak a whole bunch of damage really quickly. The false coddling moth is also going to target your citrus. So if you have stone fruit and citrus, false coddling moth is going to be a problem. So now that we know what the types of pests are that we need to try and control on our fruit trees, how are we going to do that in the most economical, cost-effective and effective way? Let's have a look. Here I'm standing next to a tree that has my solution or what I use implemented. And that is a simple organza bag. These organza bags can be used for years and years and years without needing to be replaced. They can be packed away at the end of the season 
in a very small amount of space. And if you go to shop around, basically, you can find these for super, super cheap. In essence, what we're doing is we are covering and protecting the fruit. Now, yes, I can hear the comments coming that this is an incredibly labor intensive process. And I agree, it is. And if you have huge mature trees, this is not a viable option. But if you have a couple of trees and you have 50, 60 fruit, the amount of time it's going to take you to tie them up is minimal in comparison to just not getting a harvest at all. So what I use is a 20 centimeter high and 16 centimeter long organza bag. So it's pretty decent in size. So if you look at, I can make a fist and my fist can fit inside the bag and I can take it off. That is the important thing. If you go anything smaller than a 20 centimeter by 16 centimeter, you're gonna have issues, which I've had before, where the fruit inside grows bigger than the bag and you can't get the fruit off. Then you have to cut the bag to get the fruit off, which is not a very sustainable practice. <laughs> so what we've done is just tied a few of the, the apples on this tree. This is an Anna apple and even in its short little state, it has so many apples. And I'm actually busy running an experiment here where I have one of the apples covered. Right next to it, there are two. And I want to check the pest pressure here for apples. So this one's covered, these are not. Let's see what happens. The same up at the top. I have some covered, some not, because I want to see what happens. The process is super simple, but there's one thing that you absolutely have to get right when using organza bags. And that is, when, when you put over the fruit, you're gonna have the, the, the stem, which connects the fruit to the branch. That stem, you cannot pull tight. If you pull tight, as that fruit starts to mature and grow and that stem thickens, you're going to cut off all of the nutrients and water flow and you're going to basically inhibit the growth of that fruit. So you need to leave a little bit of wiggle room about around the stem connecting to the fruit. Then what you need to do, and this is, if there's one thing you do with this, you do this right. If this is the branch, you put the branch there, you're gonna take each of the tassels over the top and you're going to tie the bag to the branch. That is crucial you're not going to put the bag around the fruit like that and then tie it around. Because what's gonna happen is on a windy day like today, the fruit's gonna flap in the bag and eventually it's gonna fall off. But if you, I'll bring you in close to see, if you tie it around the actual branch, this can flap as much as it wants to because it's connecting the fruit and the stem to the branch so this basically becomes a flag that's connected as opposed to a flag that's busy working the fruit off the tree so that is crucially important now if you don't want to go the organza bag route which i completely understand and in i say probably three years time i'm going to have to do with this apple is the same material that an organza bag is made out of you can buy insect netting to cover your whole tree. So what you would then do is wait until pollination is finished, until you've got good fruit set, and then quickly tie up your bag. The important thing there is to remember to tie it, wrap it around gently around your base, so that you don't have creepy crawlies or fruit flies or any other flying insects coming in the bottom, doing what they need to and flying back out. It's going to serve exactly the same purpose so you don't need to individually bag your fruit and that is it this will prevent anything that is flying the fruit chafer, chafer beetle the fruit fly false coddling moth all of those are not going to be able to get to your fruit if you use an organza bag or a net over your tree just make sure if you do buy nets and you do it online that you make sure you buy the right one you don't want netting with little holes, you actually want the same fabric that the organza bags are made of because nothing can get through. The fruit fly, if the fruit is touching the bag, can sting through an organza bag. 
So if you have high, high fruit fly pressure, then what I've done previously with my squashes is I have put a bag inside a bag. So I've got two bags. And then a fruit fly can't sting through two bags because the holes, the tiny little holes never line up and its stinger can't get through. So that's a super useful tip if you have high fruit fly pressure and you're getting a lot of stings, don't use one, bag your bag before you bag your fruit. And that's it. It's a simple little trick that it goes a really long way. And just remember to tie it over the branch because otherwise you're gonna lose your fruit in any case because they're probably gonna blow off. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up below in the bottom. Please share it out to fellow like-minded growers. And if you've got any questions about this, organza bags, fruit covers, bags, pests, anything like that, drop me a comment below. I'll definitely get back to you. And until next time, thanks for watching.